Today we're gonna to tie up another fly for you. Welcome to Tying Tuesday. Brady Lair back at you with another tutorial here today. This is the red-cheeked quilled buzzer. So a cool little still, still water fly. Um, obviously when you're fishing still water, chronomids are very prevalent and pretty important to the game um, and can be a really productive part of your, of your fly uh, selection there. So this is a good one to have ready to go. So we'll spin one up for you. And we're gonna start out, this is on a folding mill hook. This is their heavyweight grub. It's their model number FM1165. It's a nice heavy wire, curved shanked, down eye hook. And it's offset a little bit there to help improve your hookups, which is a nice aspect in any hook. Uh, this is a really simple tie today that we got for you. Just gotta find my thread first. But we're using our UTC 70 denier in black, so a very standard and highly used thread today. And we'll start out just by dressing our hook here with that thread. This one is a size 12 today. You can go a little bit bigger, you can, you can fish a size 10 and maybe a size down as well. A lot of times these chronomids are much larger bugs than you see in your rivers. The, the lake chronomids are pretty good size. And then our main body today is a really cool material from Hemingway. So this is their Tapered Buzzard Quills, which is a great product. If you've used natural quills before, you know that they tend to be a little brittle, kind of hard to deal with. This is a great solution for that and really makes a nice elegant looking fly once it's all said and done. So they're sticky on one side. All you gotta do is come in here and peel them off. And it's kind of a mylar material, which is a little different than some of those other synthetic quills out there, which I like quite a bit. And then we're gonna tie in the narrow side first with the sticky side up. So now that we got that secured on the hook shank here, we're just gonna walk on forward and try and keep nice, smooth thread wraps going forward so that we can wrap that quill down nicely right on top of everything. And we'll stop ourselves a hook eye to two hook eyes back to leave some room for the head of the fly. That'll be our transition portion there. We're just gonna take this and fold it over and lay it down with the silver side down. And then we got our color side facing up. And we're gonna do touching wraps, covering up the thread, but trying to make it so that we maximize the segmentation of this. The nice thing about these quills is they're two-toned. So the entire, the intent of them is to give you that nice segmentation that you would get from a natural quill, whether it be a Polish quill, some biots that you might use. These just are a little bit more durable. You can still break them if you're not careful, but you don't have to soak them or moisten them to get them to be a little less stiff like you would a natural material. So that's one of the great uh, reasons for using these guys. And then once we get to where our thread was hanging out here, we'll go ahead and wrap it down and capture it with our thread. Give it one more just to make it nice and smooth transition here. And then we can walk back over it slightly. And take our excess out. And then we'll clean this up just a little bit and it'll help create a little bit of a taper here as well. So wrapping back over everything, building that head. And we got one more material we're gonna work into the mix, which is the good old Flashaboo. And the reason for the name of this fly, the red cheek buzzer is because of the red Flashaboo. So it's a good imitation for a quill, or not a quill, sorry, for a gill rather, on either side of this fly. 
So we'll take it and we'll tie it in on my side and secure it down just like so. You can kind of leave it hanging. I usually tie it long enough so that it's going to go up to the eye but not all the way past it so that I don't have to trim anything. I can just cover that up and we'll mirror that on the opposite side. I'm just trying to keep them in place right on the side of the hooks. And then like I said, you can just cover that up and we'll build over a little bit, finishing off that head. And then back to the eye where we're gonna pull these forward. Smooth out my transition there a little bit. Pull the flash of forward and capture it right behind the eye. My thread to behave, we'll spin it so that I can get it to loop rearward. Just a couple of walking wraps, make sure it's positioned where I want it there. And then we can clip out our extra. Save that for the next fly, do the same on the other side. There are times when I'm fishing still water where the chronomen bite is the major bite that's going on. Sometimes when these bugs hatch, there's so many of them. Fish really key on them and don't have much consideration for anything else that might be in the water. So definitely an important part of being successful on still waters is having a good variety of chronomids, different colors and sizes, from the larval stage in the reds to the emerging stages and then all the way up to your dry flies. Now we got that secured, we'll go ahead and clip out our extra and we're just gonna coat this a little bit to make it a little more durable. So I got my solar res thin, which is great for body coatings. Anytime you might want it to soak into the thread a little bit, this is a good option. So we'll just dab a little bit on top and then I'll use my bodkin here to maneuver that around where I like it. And this is definitely one of those situations where a rotary vise comes in handy. Quite a bit easier to do this on a rotary vise than it is on a fixed head vise. Because you want to coat all of the fly as evenly as possible. And especially on the head here, we're going to give it a nice slick finish, sort of an exoskeleton look with this as well, just that clear outer shell of the bug. And then also adds for durability as well. So we'll keep moving it so that it doesn't build up anywhere and then we can hit it with our UV light and cure it nice and quick. And we got ourselves a finished buzzer. Again, great little still water fly. This Hemingway synthetic quills really are great for quick, easy flies that look great, fish well, uh, and they have a whole variety of colors. So you can tie based on what you have in your water, you know, go ahead and seam through it, figure out what colorations you have of chronomids and then match your hatch accordingly. So that's the red cheeked buzzer. Great little still water pattern to have in your box when you go and hit those lakes. A nice subsurface chronomid pattern to have around. Uh, not too bad to tie up either. So get some of those synthetic quills and you're pretty much ready to go. We appreciate you watching. Uh, if you wanna see more videos like this, check out the rest of the, the videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, and if you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up. Appreciate it.